in etude number one, the rhythm and the tempo are very important. You must keep the tempo consistent from the beginning all the way to the end. If you're having trouble playing it at the indicated tempo, well, play it a little bit slower, but don't speed up the parts that are easy for you. Whatever tempo you choose, you have to stick with it. One good way to learn the rhythm is to cue up your metronome and then play just the rhythm on one note, like this. That should help you learn the correct rhythms and then later you can apply the right notes once you get the rhythms right. The dynamics are also quite important in this little etude. You have a lot of very quick changes from forte to mezzo piano back to forte and you have to reflect those changes very carefully. They're subito changes at the beginning, meaning that they change suddenly. So you want to make sure that the 16th notes are soft in this example. You might be surprised just how much it's necessary to exaggerate the dynamic changes before your audience actually hears them. So do more than you think is necessary in order to reflect the correct dynamics. The note links in this piece are also very important. If you'll notice the very last note has an accent and a tenuto mark, meaning that you're supposed to play it long. Don't cut that last note short or there will be a deduction when you're playing the accented notes in the second to the last measure, don't play them too short. They're accented, but they're not staccato, so don't play them too short. If I play the last two measures, notice the note links of those eighth notes plus the last note. Uh -huh. 